Oh yeah, it's tier list time. So the last time we did a tier list, it was pretty fun. Honestly, I liked it. I see a lot of YouTubers doing it. I thought, why make original content when I can just copy other people? Just kidding, of course. There's a lot of interesting things with the tier list, like people's experiences with it and how your opinions might differ from mine. So we're going to do another one today, but this time it's going to be based on the Valve games. Now, of course, not all of these games are made by Valve. A lot of them are actually fan-made games. And some of them are even games made by other companies that Valve kind of said, here, you do this instead of us. And we're going to take a look at them today. And we're going to start with Alien Swarm. The Alien Swarm is a top-down shooter. Um, definitely an interesting concept. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't know this game existed. In fact, there's a few games I didn't even know Valve made on this list. The other one being Ricochet, which we're going to get to in a second. But yeah, this is a free game that you can get with your buddies, and it's a top-down co-op shooter. You can have some fun killing some aliens. It's by Valve. So how bad could it be? Well, unfortunately, not many people play this game. So unless you do have a full group, or at least someone to play with, it might not be all that fun. Um, despite that, I would probably give this a B. I'm gonna have to be pretty strict because Valve doesn't make a lot of bad games, and I'd probably put half of these in A or S, so I'm going to try to vary it a bit, and really trying to nitpick to pick which ones fit in each tier. Next up, Artifact. Now, Valve decided, you know, we're gonna make a card game. We're gonna do what a lot of companies are doing, and just make a card game. I don't really quite agree, I love card games. Yu-Gi-Oh, I am a huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, I love Pokemon cards, man. Digital card games, though? Yeah, I never really got too deep into that, so I'm going to be a bit rough with this one. I'm going to put Artifact in C. Now, I'm sure this is a decent game. I haven't really downloaded it, but I've seen plenty of things regarding this game, uh, so I think C is pretty fitting. Black Mesa. This is the remake, the fan remake, of Half-Life 1, and <sighs> ST all the way. Zen is now out. I played this game probably three times, and I recently beat the Zen stage. Wow. What an amazing addition to the Half-Life franchise. It's not official, but goddamn, it's probably better than anything Valve could do anyway. So, good job on the creators of Black Mesa, man. This, it slaps. Play it, download it right now. Codename Gordon. This is a fun little flash game that you have to get by typing in a certain address into your address bar while Steam's open. And it's, it's kind of like a secret Steam game. It's really cool. Um, not made by Steam, of course, but it was made in like 2004. And a lot of the things about this game are very strange. Like, Alex looks completely different. It's obviously, okay, it's Half-Life in 2D. I'm not gonna go on any further. It's just, it's Half-Life in 2D. C tier, Counter-Strike Condition Zero. This was the follow-up to Counter-Strike 1.6. Um, it's kind of like an expansion, but also kind of like its own story. It actually does have a single player campaign, as well as some added multiplayer functionality. However, unfortunately, this game died so damn quick, it just kind of fell off the earth. So, because it's Counter-Strike, I have to put it in a very good spot. I'm gonna put it in A, definitely. And then of course we have Counter-Strike 1.6, and this is the legend. The absolute legend. I gotta put it in S tier. Counter-Strike Source, this was my first, one of my first Source games I ever played, so obviously I'm gonna have high esteem. Now the problem is, do I like it more than 1.6? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't play much 1.6, so I'm much more of a Source guy. But I know 1.6 is beloved, so I'm going to have to kind of move this around a little bit. I'll put it definitely ahead of Black Mesa. Black Mesa's still great, though. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this game. I don't know what it is, maybe I grew out of the Counter-Strike kind of style of gameplay, but I'm gonna put this in A. I just... It never really sat right with me. Mainly the weapon skins, like 300 bucks for a weapon skin, man. Dave defeats Source. This one is going to... <sighs> okay, so I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never played Day of Defeat. It really has been a game that just kind of eluded me. When I first got Gary's mod, I saw that you could add this as like an expansion to get some of the models in the game. And I thought, what the hell is Day of Defeat? And this is what it is. It's a World War II style shooter in the classic Valve multiplayer action style. So, I mean, so over the years I've seen many videos of gameplay, so I think I can give a proper assessment 
I think it's definitely B, ahead of Alien Swarm for sure. And then we have regular day of defeat. Very old, one of Valve's first games, man. This thing has aged pretty poorly, but that's why we have Source, of course. I'm gonna put it right behind it in B. Deathmatch Classic. Um, nothing like playing Half-Life in multiplayer, man. I can't even imagine how amazing it could have been going back in the day during the heyday of this and playing multiplayer before there was even a whole lot of multiplayer games out. Like this must have been amazing if you had a few friends with a good PC at the time. I'm gonna put it in A. Dota 2, the legendary MOBA game. Obviously this deserves S beyond belief. I've played it quite a bit. It's a little bit more complex than League of Legends in my opinion and it's a bit hard to grasp sometimes. but. I'm gonna put it right here in S. Dota Underlords. This was also a new game that kind of came to me out of nowhere. It's a mobile game, which we know where that's gonna lead. Okay, there's a lot of great mobile games out there, and I'm sure this one's a decent one, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a hard B. Gary's Mod. Um, don't really know a whole lot about this game, but uh, I'd probably put it in B. Just kidding, it's obviously going to be S, and is it better than Counter-Strike? Well, in my opinion, yes. Half-Life Source, the remaster of Half-Life from Gold Source to Source. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in A. It is like top-notch. Half-Life literally is like my life sometimes. Half-Life Blue Shift. This is the expansion to Half-Life and I gotta be honest, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I'm gonna put it right here. I think that Opposing Force is better, so that's why I'm putting it kind of in the lower A's. Half-Life, the original. In fact, I think I like this more than Gary's Mod. Yes, I know. Is that good though? Do you guys disagree? Half-Life is fan-freaking-tastic. Another fantastic game is Half-Life Alex, which is Valve's first foray into a Half-Life VR game. And this, it slaps. Let's be honest. It's freaking awesome. So there's no doubt this is going in S tier now. The problem is, is it above Gary's Mod? I'll put it just below Gary's Mod. Next up, we have Half-Life Echoes, a fan-made game from Half-Life. And get this, it was released in 2018. That's right, the Gold Source engine is still being modified. And that makes me super happy to see as someone who is in love with the modding community and gaming and the fact that they're still making mods for this amazing game. So this mod took quite a few years to make and it's pretty much the story from a new perspective. So definitely check this out when you can. It is free, 100% worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in A. Half-Life Lost Coast, pretty much just a demo for HDR. Um, not anything too crazy about this. It's pretty short, but a fun little thing to play if you ever wanna download it on Steam. Um, yeah, I, I, just, uh, I guess, see. Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. Ah, nothing like reliving the old days of Half-Life multiplayer. So this is the Half-Life 2 version of Deathmatch, and I'm gonna go ahead, I mean, this has gotta be like right here, right? I'm gonna put it a little bit above Deathmatch Classic. Half-Life 2 Episode 1, 100% S tier. The episodes are both extremely amazing, and I'd put them just above Counter-Strike Source. Episode two, this one is also fantastic. Do I like it more than episode one though? Uh, no, I like episode one more, just ever so slightly. And then of course Half-Life 2, which I like better than both of those. Do I like it more than Alex? Uh, yes, I would say. And then we have Hunt Down the Freeman. Now Hunt Down the Freeman is probably the best iteration of Half-Life we've seen so far. Ah, man, it's, uh, yeah, it's gotta be S tier. The best game so far, I'm just kidding. This is actually so bad I made its own tier. That's right, perfect. Left 4 Dead. Now, when this game came out, it blew me away as a kid. I played this first on the Xbox with my brother and we played so many survival missions on that lighthouse map. And I can't tell you how many great memories that has given me. So this has to be, I mean, it's very esteemed. This is 100% S tier, without a doubt. So let's go ahead. Oh uh, man, okay, this is hard. This is really hard. Um, <laughs> I like it more than Counter-Strike. I played quite a bit of Counter-Strike, but nothing beats Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead 2 is even better than Left 4 Dead. Literally, it's just Left 4 Dead with more stuff. So how can I make it any worse than Left 4 Dead? It's gotta be better. I'm gonna put it right above Left 4 Dead. And then we have 
Half-Life Opposing Force. An amazing expansion. And I'm going to put this... You know what? Yes. Now you might be wondering why is Half-Life Source down here when Half-Life 1 is up here? Aren't they like the same game? There was a few modifications, like the shaders in the water and the lighting sources. And maybe I'm biased or nostalgic, but I love the original classic gold source. Something about source, like they just, they screwed the game up. There's also a lot of bugs and glitches that I found throughout my playthrough that I was not a big fan of. Plus the weapon models suck ass. All right, now we get into the portal games. Um, uh, wait, where's, where's regular portal? What? Ah, portal. Portal 1. This is literally a masterpiece. I don't need to tell you guys that. Portal 1 is absolutely fantastic. I almost like it more than Half-Life. Almost. I like it more than Half-Life 2 though, I'd say. So I'm gonna put it right behind Gary's mod. And Portal 2 is even better than that, adding a much longer story mode with deeper lore added, as well as of course the co-op, and then eventually the custom maps that you can download from the community, which of course, as you know, I love. So this is definitely going to be a notch above Portal. Portal Stories Mail, a fantastic community-made mod that I absolutely implore you guys to go check out. It's, it's its own game. It's not even really a mod. It's pretty much its own game. And this is so good, it's the first mod or player-made game that deserves to be on the S tier. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. Portal Stories VR, it's pretty much, it's by the same people who made Portal Stories Mel, but this one is a little, it's a little short VR experience, it's like 30 minutes. I enjoyed my playthrough through this when I got my VR headset, it's one of the first games I downloaded. So definitely a nice treat. I'm gonna go ahead and put this, I'll put it in B, I mean it, it's, it's a great game, but it's pretty short. Ricochet, Valve's forgotten game. Man, does anyone even know that Valve made this game? Because I didn't until like recently. <laughs> this is pretty much like a Tron style futuristic shooter game, I guess you could call it. It's very primitive and it's one of Valve's first games way back in the late 90s. I'm sure it slapped pretty hard when it came out, but nowadays no one really plays it, so I'm gonna have to put it in C tier, unfortunately. Team Fortress 2, one of the most legendary of all class-based shooter games. In fact, I'm pretty sure this pioneered the class-based shooter genre, so I'm gonna have to give this thing pretty high esteem. I had a lot of fun playing with it throughout my years of gaming, so I think I'm gonna put this right here. Oh, and also when I said the first player made mod, I lied because Black Mace is in here, but yeah. It's so good, I almost thought Valve actually made it, so that's my excuse. Team Fortress Classic. You cannot beat the classics, but unfortunately this game is also pretty old, and I don't think it really stands up today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. The Lab. It's the game you download when you first get a Steam VR headset, and boy is it a joy to play. But it's also just a bunch of mini games, but damn, when it's your first experience, what a way to get into VR. S tier. Half-Life Absolute Redemption, a fan-made amazing mod that definitely needs some kind of recognition and it's pretty old too. So the fact that we have old and new mods in here tells you the, the long history of player-made content throughout all Source games. And now we come to this tier list. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right after Team Fortress Classic. Behind the scenes of Counter-Strike Condition Zero, um, honestly, I'm gonna put this in the same tier as Condition Zero. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, in fact, it might even be worse. I don't even know, what, e what is this? Behind the scenes, is it like, is it even like a game? Like, B tier. Half-Life Decay. Now, many of you might not even know what this is, but you're gonna be surprised to know this was actually my first multiplayer source experience. No joke. I didn't have a computer when I was a kid. I had a PS2 though, and I had a brother, and we had Half-Life on PS2, which Decay was exclusive to. In fact, you can't even play Decay now. Well, I'm sure there's a way to play it online, but it never came out on PC. And it's pretty much a co-op Half-Life story. Its own Half-Life story. I don't even really know if Valve made it, but regardless, a very cool campaign, and something that I have a fondness in my heart for, because it, it does take place in the Half-Life lore, it makes sense. And I'd probably put this right here. Aperture Hand Lab, this is going to be what you get. It's kind of like the lab, but it's pretty much testing out the new index controllers for the index. 
Um, I don't think it's as good as the lab, so I'm gonna go ahead and slap it right here. Next up is Counter-Strike Nexon Zombies, which I had no idea what it was until I actually did a video on a mod based from this game. And then I realized, oh, there's a Counter-Strike Online game, and there's a lot of cool things you can do on it. And I think it's still on Steam, but it's under a different name. It's, it, it's, it's strange. But regardless, what a cool idea for a Counter-Strike game. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in A tier. And then next up we have Prospect, which is pretty much another fan-made game. And it takes place, of course, in Nova Prospect, but you do kind of explore other areas as you go through the game. It, it's a pretty neat little treat, um, definitely worth playing. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in B tier. And last up we have Half-Life Deathmatch Source. So, um, yeah. Another deathmatch game. I'm gonna just go ahead and put it between deathmatch and Team Fortress. And there you have it! So I don't have anything in D tier because, I mean, whether it's a community-made game, or of course it's by Valve, there tends to not be a lot of bad games thrown in. I mean, the community knows what a good Source game should be. Except for, of course, these guys. But what do you guys think about my list? Let me know what you would change. I'm a Half-Life fanboy, so of course I put the Half-Life games with high prestige, which I'm sure you guys would as well. But maybe you would have put Counter-Strike ahead of them. Let me know your thoughts down below. How would you differ from this list? If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. You guys are sick. Stay sick. I'll see you in the next video. And until next time, farewell.